Okay. Hello, everybody. Um, I am Dr. Maria Costa, and it's by now um, almost 6 a.m. 6 p.m. Sorry. Um, just few like one minute more, and we will start. I see that there is a lot of people coming. That is fantastic. I appreciate everybody making time to share this evening, this hour during the evening with us. Um, again, is my name is Dr. Maria Costa, and it's my pleasure to start this series of uh, webinars um, at Children's National Health System at the Gilbert Family Neurofibromatosis Institute. Um, I hope that you all enjoy. Um, at the beginning, just a couple of things before to start. At the beginning of the session, um, uh, the microphones are going to be mute. Um, it means that you want to ask any questions, please type them. I will see the questions and I will try to answer what I am talking. And at the end, uh, we will have some time for questions. Um, um, the host, um, Chadan, we uh, open the lines for you guys to make questions um, that I would try my best to answer. Um, really is a pleasure to be here. Uh, let me tell you who I am and what is the idea of these um, webinars. Um, I will be your moderator. Um, I am the clinical director of the uh, Gilbert Family Neurofibromatosis Institute. I am associated professor of the Neurology and Pediatric Department at George Washington uh, University School, and I am also the director of the Neurocognitive Program uh, at the Neurofibromatosis Institute. Um, I have been working um, in neurofibromatosis uh, for around 13 years now, and I have been working mm -hmm. with children with learning disabilities, um, ADHD, autism, learning problems for more than 25 years. Um, since probably 13 years ago, I was invited to work with children with neurofibromatosis and with families with neurofibromatosis. And I see approximately 20 patients weekly uh, in the clinic. And after talking with parents and giving recommendations, um, I decided that instead of giving one-to-one -one recommendations, probably we should start uh, giving general recommendations that could be available for families at home, and they can start using those recommendations um, at home every night when you are doing homework with your kids, when you want to help them in the daily basis and not waiting uh, to see the doctor um, in, in the clinic. Also that you can take advantage of the times that you see the experts in the clinic to ask questions about how you can help your children. As a mom of three children, I know that uh, for me it's important to be part of their development, their growing, and for me, it's very, very uh, um, satisfactory when I see that I am part of that process. I don't have any doubt that you all feel the same. And, uh, but we are very busy and going through uh, evaluations and um, appointments is tiring, time consuming, and sometimes frustrating. I mean that the goal of these seminars or these webinars is give you um, very, uh, hands-on information about what you can do at home, mm. um, very simple things that you can use in your daily routines, uh, and probably generate questions that you can ask your healthcare providers when you go and visit them. Um, it doesn't mean that uh, pretend to be a solution of all your problems. Uh, you cannot hear? Okay. Um, is now, better, please let me know if you are hearing well. Um, uh, it's not going to be the solution of the problems, but um, it's going to be some help uh, that over the time uh, is going to try to um, uh, provide um, additional tools uh, that become like a toolbox for uh, parents uh, in their daily life. Um, we are currently scheduled these webinars uh, every t 
two months. And here you can see that we are scheduling uh, the next one for March 26, uh, June 4, uh, July 30, September 24, and November 26. Every other month on a Monday evening, uh, we are going to do these uh, webinars. Um, we also, for those that live in the uh, DC area, we are organizing some family support uh, groups that we will announce in the future where they are going to be and how you can sign in for those uh, support groups if you are interested to, uh, to be part of those. It means that just stay tuned. Uh, I will give you some information of how you can get that um, information about the location and the dates that are going to, uh, to, to, to happen those family support groups. Um, again, as I mentioned, the, the, the topics that we have selected at this point are those that I feel that are kind of the most common um, complaints uh, in, in, in my practice, and that can be, um, um, can be uh, uh, very useful uh, and also easy to put in, in, in the context of the daily routines. Um, some of the topics that we uh, some of the topics that we have selected for the next webinars include, um, for example, we are uh, uh, going to to, to uh, uh, talk about uh, tips that can help children to improve handwriting on March 26. It means we are going to. Um, uh, to work with an occupational therapist about how you can help your kids to improve the handwriting at school, sorry, at, at, at home when they are doing homework. This is something that a lot of parents um, find difficult and a lot of kids have a lot of frustration about handwriting and we have discussed that with many uh, uh, parents at, 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 in, the, in, the, in the clinic visit. And the, we have been working with some fantastic occupational therapists that can give some advices. What type of pens you can uh, use? How you can facilitate that the kid is able to do better position of the hand when it's, it's writing? How you can know that this is something that, 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 that is working or not? And all the additional uh, suggestions that you can use when you are working with, with them. Um, in June, uh, we are going to talk about um, helping the kids how to complete the homework. I think that for all parents, including myself, doing homework sometimes is hard, uh, difficult, uh, battle between the kids and the parents, and how we can establish routines, strategies, and how we can make that process easier, less frustrating, and actually enjoyable. Uh, for the family. Um, we will uh, work with a psychologist um, uh, to help in that, uh, uh, in, in that series of strategies and recommendations uh, that can help uh, the families to establish routines um, and strategies to, to do the homework. Um, then uh, we will talk about um, social skills. I think that this is an area that is challenging for many kids of, uh, with NF. Uh, many uh, parents and teachers complain about the difficulties that children with NF have in maintaining friends. It means I think that we all agree that they have a specific profile that is uh, probably quite different than the typical um, autism kid. Uh, they really want to have friends. They really uh, look forward for friendships and they are really craving for, for those friends to be part of their life. They are um, uh, very, very caring uh, children that looks for uh, the opportunities to share uh, activities with them, but they don't know how to do it. Sometimes their approach is um, inappropriate, making other uh, 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 kids to reject them yeah. instead of approach them. We are going to talk about how we can, as a parent at home, provide the proper feedback 
for the kids to be able to understand social clues and how to we can facilitate then the process of learn and understand how to make more easy and more accessible uh, social relations. I think that this is a very important area for uh, 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 many families that they struggle with that. Um, we also have been uh, thinking that another area that would be important for families is talking about how to advocate for advocating for uh, school-based services. This is something that is a very common um, concern, and I spend a lot of time with families explaining the basic things about the uh, educational rights and how to work with the schools. Some parents have a lot of frustration about the communication with the school, and what I have told many of the parents is that my personal experience with the schools is that the schools are really looking for solutions for the problems as much as you as a parent are looking for solutions. Sometimes it's the lack of common language and the understanding well the same language or the same communication process to work together toward the same goal. It means that sometimes if the parents don't understand very well what are your rights and how the system works to get access to services. And many times the, the teachers don't understand well what is NF and how the NF diagnosis produce impact in the learning process for the kids. It means that you as a parent are the one that has the possibility to put together those two difficulties in a common understanding. Uh, and, and be able to solve that puzzle for, for the school. And if you are able to solve that puzzle, I guarantee that it's going to be a very easy pathway to work with the school and get the service that in many, in many cases is possible to obtain. And in other cases, maybe if it's not possible to obtain, you will get much more than what you are getting before because with that common understanding, it's possible to explore um, possibilities that were not open before. Um, and for the last uh, um, uh, webinar for this year, um, we really want to start teaching uh, the child to advocate for their own needs. I really feel that this is a very important area that we need to start doing since they are little. Um, I have many uh, teenagers and young adults that don't know exactly how to speak up for what they need. And they uh, grow up and they go to high school and they are ready to go to college. And they still are not able to understand very well their own needs and they are not able to speak up about how to obtain help when they need. And I really think that we need to start teaching this uh, process very early in life, and we would like to work toward that process and teach the parents how they can teach very early about uh, uh, um, how uh, create the culture in their own children about how advocate for their own needs. That's probably the ones that we have selected for, for this year. It's really important to understand that uh, for us, these are the topics that um, I have selected just based in whatever is what I feel that is some of the most common uh, topics that I discuss almost every day in clinic with parents. Um, however, here the most important part is your feedback. You are the ones that are running um, these webinars. You are putting your time in, in, in this. I mean, that is very important for us that you tell us those areas that you want to be explored. Uh, please let us know any comments about uh, the webinar. I uh, appreciate that um, uh, you sent us comments about the technology, the how was uh, wrong, if you have problems, technological problems, hearing or understanding me, I promise to talk slow. I know that sometimes I talk very fast, and in addition with my accent for some people is hard to understand, meaning that I am trying to stop slow. 
uh, but also about the topics or things that you want, uh, you all want to be um, taken in account for these webinars, you can email to Caitlin. Um, uh, the email is um, in the screen. Or you can email me. Uh, many of the uh, um, uh, people, you can find my email in the website at Children's National. It's macosta at childrensnational.org. It's basically uh, the same as uh, Caitlin, but uh, it's M as in Maria, Acosta, A C O S T A, at childrensnational.org. We would love to hear from all of you and would like to uh, improve whatever is not um, doing well or any suggestions about uh, topics that you would like to be treated in the future uh, webinars. Um, it's really important to understand, and today I'm going to talk a little bit about learning difficulties and some of the tools that are available uh, for you to access. And that, that's probably how this idea of the webinar came along as a possibility. Um, I want to um, explain how this uh, comes as a, um, one idea to put together a series of, 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 of uh, educational resources. Um, as I mentioned, I have been working with children with um, learning disabilities for more than uh, 25 years and approximately 13 years working with children with NF. And um, what I have found is that children with learning disabilities in general of any type uh, share very similarities with children with neurofibromatosis in terms of the difficulties that they have uh, in, in learning. And sometimes we focus more in the difference than in the commonalities. And this is really important to try to look the other side. And sometimes I explain to parents that if you go to the teacher at the school and you talk about NF and they don't know what is NF, that your kid has diagnosis of NF plus ADHD, most likely the teacher knows what is ADHD. And most likely she knows what type of accommodations a kid with ADHD will need. It means that Try to focus in some of the common things that people know about that could be probably the best starting point for many discussions. It means that a lot of things that we are going to talk in these webinars are relevant not only for children with NF, but also for children with other uh, disabilities. Um, that because there is a lot of correlation or uh, uh, possibilities to exchange the intervention. Children with uh, difficulties in um, handwriting skills are not only in, 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 in the NF population, other population and other conditions may have difficulties also uh, in handwriting. It means that those children also can benefit for those interventions and, um, and it's not necessarily exclusive. It means that if you have anybody else that would be interested in learning about any of these topics, um, when we have these 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 events. Hello. Feel free to invite them uh, to this um, uh, this uh, webinar. Um, some of the most common difficulties that you will see um, in children with neurofibromatosis are basically um, attention deficits and difficulties in social interaction. Um, and we are going to talk, can you hear me? I, yes. Um, and attention deficit and social interactions. And we are going to talk specifically about those, those two. Behavioral problems are less frequent and are more specific in some specific age groups. Um, the little kids that um, uh, preschool age are uh, specifically uh, uh, common, the complaints about uh, behavioral problems. Um, and then um, the, that is probably the, the most frequently um, age where you will see 
difficulties uh, at this, in, in these areas. All of these situations generate um, uh, a lot of stress for the families, and this is important to take in, in, into account because in addition to all the things that you all have uh, in your place with multiple medical appointments, this is uh, uh, an extra stress that you need to, to manage. It's important to understand that, as I mentioned, this is not unique for the NF population, that ADHD, as I mentioned, is a common condition that, according, for example, with the CDC, is present in approximately 8.8% of the U.S. population, and this is a distribution recently published by the CDC, how you can see all around the country the different rates of, 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 of diagnosis of, of ADHD. Uh, it means that that's the point about that when you talk with the teachers about ADHD interventions or autism interventions, um, the schools are probably going to be familiar, and if you educate them about the correlations and the relations with autism and ADHD in the NS population, you will be probably the experts that are going to educate the schools about those correlations. But they already will have the basis for putting interventions in the classroom because they already know very well how to treat children uh, with ADHD. But this not only um, 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 ADHD, uh, there is many other conditions like learning disabilities, autism, you can see up to 7% of the, of the children in general have diagnosis of autism, uh, emotional disturbance, intellectual disabilities, and other hair impairments. When we look at the, uh, when you are going to see how many of the children with um, NS are going to be classified for educational uh, rights, most of them are going to be classified in this percentage, in this 13% of other hair impairments. However, um, if we do a very careful evaluation, many times we can also add other additional diagnoses like learning disabilities, speech difficulties. Many kids with NF have difficulties in articulation and, 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 and language. Um, a high percentage we know now that uh, can have diagnosis of autism or is not complete diagnosis of autism may have uh, autism traits. Up to 20% uh, of the population can have, the, in the NF population, can have a diagnosis of autism with the full criteria, and approximately 40% may have diagnosis of um, uh, autism traits. That means that they don't have complete diagnosis of autism, but some of the features in terms of communication skills or social interaction can resemble children with uh, AD, with, uh, sorry, with NF. That means that it's very easy with the help of um, uh, your healthcare providers, if you understand this correlation, that you can get uh, services um, uh, for, 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 for your children if you understand that it's not only the diagnosis of, AD, of, sorry, of NF, but it's going to provide the opportunity for you to get those services, but it's also the correlation of the other diagnosis around uh, this diagnosis of NF that can facilitate that. Um, I would like to, uh, to mention a couple of the resources that we are having available, and these are all available for all of you. This is part of what I mentioned. A um, couple of years ago, I reached a CTF that is a wonderful organization that works very, very hard for uh, all the families with uh, children and patients with neurofibromatosis about the need of start producing resources that the families can use uh, at home. And with the uh, wonderful support of CTF, I start to create um, a family notebook that basically the idea is uh, provide uh, some guidance or some kind of like a notebook where you can find very simple um, recommendations that you can look through the years or depends on what you need, and that you can reach at that um, uh, uh, when you have questions about the specific topics. Um, 
with their collaboration, it became not only uh, something that you can look and read some definitions or some guidance about um, different topics, but also became a, a beautiful piece of art with um, uh, some cartoons and on superheroes and some uh, um, uh, children activities. It means that for those that has not uh, 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 don't know this uh, tool, uh, you can find that at the Children's Tumor Foundation website, and it's free for anybody that wants uh, to print it at home. You just need to look in the Children's Tumor Foundation website for the Inspiring Guidebook. Or if you want the beautiful notebook printed full color with all uh, um, instructions and everything, you can order to uh, CTS for $25, but really it's, it's up to you guys. You can have access and print it whenever you, you, you need it. I am going to go through, um, um, uh, through the notebook with some of the ideas of what the notebook includes, because basically it was uh, from working with families and the idea to try to provide a more um, uh, um, uh, tools that the family don't have to leave home to be able to access and that the families can uh, we work all very hard and when we go home we just want to be home and put our pajamas, do our homework with the kids and just thinking that we have to go to another therapy or another um, doctor's appointment, I think that is tiring for everybody. It means that the more you can do at home with your kids and spend time with your kids and quality time with your kids, I really feel that is better. It means that these, the notebook, the webinars, um, and other things that we are trying to put together for you to share time with your families at the same time that we learn more about the condition are some of the uh, efforts that we are trying to put together for all of you. The book is, uh, the handbook has a total of 13 sessions, and I'm going to go through them uh, very fast. Um, if you have interest, you can look at that, but I want you all to know exactly what you can find in the, in, in the notebook. In the first session, you are going to look basically for what is the impact of the neurofibromatosis on the family. We know that um, the diagnosis of neurofibromatosis is not only affect the, the child, it affects the family in general. Uh, because it's not only the behavioral or learning problems, it's also the medical diagnosis, the appointments, the uncertainty of the future, the, the different uh, systems that can be affected. It means that it's important to understand what brings into context once you have the diagnosis, and for every family, it's, it's, it's a different context and the different uh, uh, challenges. In the second session, many of the parents already know uh, what is neurofibromatosis, but has some nice cartoons that uh, shows what is neurofibromatosis and how neurofibromatosis is a systemic condition. It's a condition that can affect different areas of the body, almost every, every uh, uh, system in the body, and how you need to pay attention to all these different uh, uh, problems, and that's the reason why uh, um, a care for a care provider that is familiar with the condition is important. Then it comes as uh, uh, things that are part of what we do, for example, in clinic, what I do with my patient that is the checkups, the regular checkups, and also the checkups with the pediatrician. What is important that you maintain a very good relation with your pediatrician or your uh, family care provider, and how you also can educate your family, your your primary care provider. It's important because children with NF or adults with NF are not different than any other uh, adult or child. They need to have immunizations. They need to look for their development. They need to look for anything that we go general with, 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 with any doctor. What we need to, to know as a patient is to educate the doctors that are not expert in NS about what are the things that they need to look at in more specific. Like, for example, I always tell the parents uh, that your, the development of the children with NS, it may be delayed. If it's delayed, the pediatrician needs to be more proactive 
and need to find resources to intervene faster. We cannot say, oh, it's a little slow walking, but let's give some more time. No, I think that because he's a high risk to developmental problems, we should be more proactive in the interventions and we should be looking closely to that development, meaning that as a parent, you can educate the pediatrician and educate the, the, the primary care providers about that. And this is very important that you advocate for those types of, of, of relations. Um, any pediatrician in a, any uh, child is going to do a developmental evaluation normally that include almost all these areas according with the age. They are going to look for what are the cognitive skills, how is the academic achievement, how are the communication skills, how is the behavioral and developmental process, how is the psychosocial and developmental process, and how is the family history. All these are the areas that almost every pediatrician is going to be able to do with any, any child. I mean, that for the NF children, it's not different. I mean, that you can't discuss those areas also with your pediatrician, and then the pediatrician should be able to provide recommendations, and if not, it should be able to refer to an NF expert in those areas that are uh, the concern or that he doesn't have the expertise. And I always try to be very clear about how we need to be uh, very gentle with the pediatricians. It's very important to understand that they don't need to know a lot about NF. NF is something that is not a very common condition, yeah, yes, and they may not have seen many patients, and that's okay not to know. It's important is to know where and when to look for help. I mean that I personally tell uh, um, uh, many patients, you can call the pediatrician if you have any question, but if the pediatrician says, I don't know, it's absolutely fine. Just contact us and we will be more than happy to try to find the answer. And sometimes we don't have the answer either, but we will try to find together other experts, other people that may have an answer, or all together we'll try to find what is the best possible cause of what is concerning in a child. Because as it's a rare condition, there are many things that we don't know yet about the clinical manifestations of NF. Um, in section four, uh, we are going to talk about uh, some of the areas that are more uh, frequently problems in um, uh, academic performance for of children with neurofibromatosis, and this is um, executive function. This is a very special area of my interest, and that's probably the reason why I decided to do one full section for, for, for executive function, and it's because executive function is uh, kind of a very important area that helps people to make things happen. You can be very smart um, or not very smart, but if you have a good executive function, you will be able to accomplish more things that if you don't have good executive function. And executive function is something that people can learn and we can teach our kids um, how to improve the executive function. We, we use our executive functions every day. When we take decisions, when we change the route to go to work because it's a detour, when we have to modify a recipe because we went for celery and it's not celery in the rest in the supermarket and we need to change that ingredient for something else. When we thought that we have cash in the in the in the wallet and ended paying with a credit card, it's many things that we use our executive functions every day. And the more efficient we are with our executive function, more efficient we are in our daily lives is that I really feel, and this is an area that is very challenging for many kids with ADHD, uh, sorry, with NF, and the early we start teaching good executive function skills, the better for them. But the best way to teach them is at home in everything that we do every day. And the best way to do it is if the parents understand what is executive function. And that for that reason, I decided to dedicate one specific session uh, in session four for executive function, where you will all find very clear explanations of what are the executive functions, how they work, 
and also some recommendations where in the brain are located and how they develop over the years and how um, we can do some activities at home, very simple things and also something very actually fun to do. I put examples like, for example, um, how activities like making cookies can be an activity that you can use to teach a kid executive functions. If we find a recipe for cookies, if we measure the ingredients, if we organize the ingredients, if we uh, know what is the order, if we uh, travel, should we try to find a solution because he asked for granulated sugar and we don't have granulated sugar at the time that we are doing the recipe, what we can do? If we have a problem with something else, how we can solve the problem? These kind of things can be very useful for teaching uh, executive functions, how we can teach them organization skills and all those types of things that are going to be useful. The most important part is that when we develop a structure and a strategies for teaching executive function to children that has difficulties in executive function, we also improve our executive functions. Our executive functions get much, much better just because we need to develop our own executive functions to be able to teach them. And those are tools that are not only useful for kids or children with NS, are useful for all the families. It means that at the end of the day, you will see that all the family will benefit of this intervention. Me that uh, look at this section and you will find some uh, recommendations. In sections five, six, seven, and eight, we talk about estranging family relations. And this is really, really, really important. I would like not to, um, I would like really to emphasize in these sections about how we need to dedicate time to make a great connection with our children. And this is especially important in the times in life that they are difficult. And the times in life that they are difficult are especially around the terrible tools or a little bit uh, later when they are developing their own independence, when they need to be oppositional to develop their own identity, and also in the adolescent years. And in all uh, parts of the world, adolescents are difficult. And children with NS are no different than, than, than any other uh, um, uh, child in that uh, time of the year. It means that understanding, respecting them, and having a strong relation, uh, a strong emotional uh, ties with them, a strong emotional uh, 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 support, is very, very important. Positive relation is going to be the most important parenting goal that you can establish. If you have a very good relation with your child, you can establish rules, um, uh, routines, uh, regulations, and they are going to be amazingly happy with those. At the end, they may not like your rules, but at the end, this tight connection with you uh, is going to make them to follow those rules. But if you have no good relation, at the end it's not going to be any way that they are going to um, uh, 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 you able to maintain that connection and rebellion, uh, bad manners, uh, uh, being confrontational all the time is basically what you are going to get uh, as a feedback from any rules that you establish all the time. I mean that in those sessions five, six, seven, and eight, there is some descriptions about some techniques that um, I described and put together uh, for, for, for working over understanding that period in life that is uh, uh, complicated. And that for all other kids, it also happened um, in the preschool years uh, when they also are developed uh, their independence uh, that is also uh, normal for many of the, of the children. Um, there is something like uh, some of the examples are, for example, uh, these uh, very well known uh, uh, believe about um, 
time out. I think that we all have here about time out and how we grew up with the idea that time out is a great um, educational tool. And many studies have demonstrated that time out, as we learned it when we were little with the negative um, connotation of being separated from the environment that we are not behaving good and put it isolated in a corner until you behave well, it's not really a good thing that encourage a positive behavior in children. And I wanted to call it in a different way. It's called positive timeout. And basically is um, we all have the right to be upset or disappointed uh, at these situations that generate frustration. And we all have the right to do that. What we don't have the right is to have bad reactions. I, I, I have all the right to be upset because I want 20 chocolate chip cookies, and mom doesn't want to give me 20 chocolate chip cookies. My right is to be upset because I want them. What is not right is to hit my sister because I want the cookies. I deserve a hug and understanding that I am not happy because I cannot have the cookies. Yes. I can have a hug, I can uh, have a pat in my shoulder and say, Daddy, I understand. I, I understand that you are not happy because you cannot have 20 cookies. Does that mean that you aren't going to give the 20 cookies? No, of course not. But it's a really kind of understanding that it's okay to be frustrated. What is not frust is okay is to have a bad reaction. And sometimes the way to control that reaction is give the opportunity to go away from the place where the stimulus is producing this overreactivity and get control of their emotions. But that doesn't mean that it's a negative uh, um, connotation. I can go with you to that spot where you are going to try to control yourself. That spot where you are going to be doesn't need to be an ugly place, like a chair in the corner where everybody's going to look at me like, oh, you are um, in a punishment place. No, it could be a nice place where I can take a deep breath, count to 10. I can hold my mommy's hand or I can have my favorite teddy bear. Nobody's going to talk to me. And once I feel calm and I feel in better control of my reaction, I can come back to the place and I can be actually congratulated for being able to control my reactions because at the end I am making the effort to control my reactions. That is a, comp a completely different opportunity to regain control that those described it long time ago in, in what we put the kid in a punishment situation to kind of like let him know that is bad and it is a negative connotation for, for him being in a timeout. But that, that's one of the things that you will uh, find in these uh, sessions uh, as an example of how I feel that when we put everything in positive, in the context of positive reinforcement, um, we probably will be able to obtain uh, better um, uh, support uh, that, that uh, in a negative uh, reinforcement. Uh, the session nine is going to talk about social skill deficit, and we will have um, a specific webinar for that, um, looking um, about how the association in, in, with uh, autism trains and the difficulties for the kids to, to learn about um, uh, social interaction is also important, and we will look about how that is the correlation and some recommendations to how to teach uh, children about uh, social skills. And in session 10, we will talk about parent-teacher communication, and also we have a, a webinar that is going to be talking about that. But also we will have in this uh, handbook some recommendations, how to meet the teachers and how to put in the context, how to tell them about uh, the, the NS, uh, to, to put in the good communication and initiate the discussion. Um, in sessions 11 and 12, we will talk very briefly in general about educational rights, and again, we also will have a webinar over these uh, uh, educational rights. What is the general, what is the difference between an IEP and 504, how we can, you can work with your pediatrician or your uh, 
uh, uh, provider on those, and what is the difference between one and the other, and how to prepare for those meetings. Uh, and in session 13, uh, we are going to talk about resiliency, and it's basically that ability to overcome the hardship and the adversity, and how we can help our children to uh, uh, build that resiliency, having good caring relations, having good expectations for them, and giving them opportunities to participate and, 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 and provide positive things for other people, and how we can start very early uh, to build that, because this is going to be very important for the rest of, of, of their life. I mean that in general, this is what uh, the notebook is going to uh, be able to provide all of you again. Um, that was a, a resource that I create in cooperation with, um, with the support of CPS and in cooperation with CHAT, that is the Organization for Children and Adults with ADHD. Um, I would appreciate any feedback. Uh, any additional question, feel free to uh, contact me. I would be more than happy to uh, 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 to answer any questions. There are other two resources that are also available by free uh, for CTS. That is a the small, very small brochure that you can have to take for the schools that you can take that is a, a very small version that I also did for CTS that is this learning with NF that is gives a small, uh, very, very, um, summarize information for the teachers and for the parents that don't want to read all these um, big um, notebooks about the, 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 the most common uh, problems for learning in NF. And there is also a guide for educators that Dr. Kaur uh, also <coughs> uh, uh, did for uh, CTF. See that there is many resources that you can uh, a fine available um, uh, to share and educate the people around uh, all of you. Uh, um, uh, I want also to tell you a couple of other things that we have in our pipeline this year. It's going to be full of activities for all of you guys. Uh, we are going to do a family meeting, family day, actually. Uh, uh, it's going to be on April 7th. At Children's National, we are really, really excited to uh, do a very fantastic uh, day. Uh, we hope that this year is not going to be a boring um, uh, series of lectures uh, one after the other. We are um, looking for a very exciting program with a lot of fun activities. We are going to have yoga sessions, uh, uh, games. Um, scientific uh, activities, the kids are going to play with microscopes and other types of activities. The parents are also invited to, to share those activities with, with kids. They are going to play in a research laboratory, analyze samples, and learn about research hands-on. I mean, we are working very hard with uh, Children's National to put a very fun uh, day. We are going to also to um, have, of course, some lectures uh, with experts in um, in different areas. But basically, we would like to to do a combined program. Uh, we will have a lot of people that is going to take care of the children, while we have a couple of very serious uh, lectures about autism and also about the MEC inhibitors and uh, that are really hot topic right now that many people want to learn about that, and probably other topics like maybe scoliosis or optic nerviomas. We are trying to uh, finalize the program that we are going to, uh, uh, to let you know uh, very soon. But it's going to be on April 7th from 9 to 3 p.m., but it's going to be fun, 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 fun. I promise that we are working very hard to make this a fun day uh, with some educational uh, lectures, but really with a lot of hands-on activities for parents and children. So I just say the date, and we are going to provide a link to register. It's really, really, really important to register because for those activities that implies like research, hands-on, and also for food, we really need to have a head count. Otherwise, we will not be able. If we have a, only a few people that register, and we have like 10 microscopes and we don't have more than that, many people is not going to be able 
to do the activities if they are not registered. Mira, we appreciate that you let us know in advance if you are going to attend. Uh, with that, these are the links. We will share that in Facebook and the links to register for the event. And you will find also in Facebook uh, uh, the link for, uh, with all the information. We will keep updating that over the, the time. And the, the, this webinar, as well as the other activities, are supported by Children for, uh, Tumor Foundation, as I mentioned, that really has been fantastic in the support that has provided to us over the years. And I really, really cannot uh, be more thankful for them with all the support that they have provided to us. Um, I think I went a little bit longer of what I expected. We still have like 10 minutes for questions. And again, this is um, the first of uh, what I hope that would be a very useful uh, activity for all of you. Um, I will open for questions uh, written or uh, allowed. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi, can you hear me, Dr. Acosta? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, so I have a question. Um, regarding yeah. executive, fun executive functioning skills, um, my daughter's five and she has MF. Um, she also has an optic glioma, um, which was shrunk with chemotherapy and she's doing very well. Um, but she does seem to have um, a lot of issues with behavior, mostly controlling herself. She knows right from wrong, but the controlling of her actions is difficult. And I'm wondering, is that something that is more, I hate to say prominent, but something that's maybe amplified because of the optic glioma in the area that it's in in the brain? In your experience? Um. I think that a uh, couple of things. I I think that um, they are. I, I don't have uh, data. I will tell what is my experience. I really feel that some kids, after the treatment uh, with chemotherapy, tend to have uh, some specific behaviors. I see quite often they are a little bit more. Uh, uh, have more difficulties with inhibitory control that tend to be more pronounced uh, in children that have been receiving chemotherapy uh, than those that have not. Um, I am not sure if these are related with the chemotherapy or with the genetic association, but you are right. Uh, they tend to have more difficulties on that. My experience is that sometimes uh, the combination of behavior, my, my experience is that the combination of behavioral intervention for working with inhibitory control. It, it, again, this, uh, the um, um, executive function training will help, but many of these kids may need medication to help them to achieve control of that. And what I explain, um, the, the, the parents is like, they may want to be in good control, but they cannot be in good control. I mean that what sometimes medication does is, um, uh, they uh, they tend to um, uh, the medication gives them a the little break that allows them to be successful when they try to do the rules and regulations that you put in their plate. Yes, I mean you can tell this is the rules and I will give you rewards. But at the end of the day, if they are not able to do it, it's going to be complicated for them to be accomplished, and that's you know a frustration. Is that the medication sometimes helps? then to be more efficient in how they accomplish those those rules and regulations. Okay, and what, sense? what types, it, it does make a lot of sense actually, and it's something that I'm, I'm trying to get a good handle on this before she goes to kindergarten in the fall. Um, and one of the things I was wondering is what types of medications can I research and, and maybe bring up to um, her team of doctors? Um, I think that, where me? are you located? Uh, I'm actually in Buffalo, New York. Okay. I think that you can uh, talk with your uh, pediatrician or with the NF doctors about normally what I suggest is to consider uh, ADHD medications 
um, the typical ADHD medications that are used in children with ADHD, but try to use very low doses. Children with NS tend to be very sensitive to um, um, uh, ADHD medications, meaning that they most of the time need uh, very low doses um, in a combination with behavioral man uh, management. Uh, it's very important to understand that the medication is not the solution. They will need behavioral management is the primary result. The medication is only like like a little break. It's just hold tight that, that the rest is going to be the behavioral intervention. That medications that are used for uh, ADHD kids is what I would suggest to explore. Okay. Okay. And so you and the other question I had just following up on your comment was. So you, it, it is something that you see, um, again, amplified is the only word that kind of comes to mind, um, in kids who have had chemotherapy, like it's a, like a long-term side effect of chemotherapy. Did you, is that what you said? Um, I don't think that it's a long-term. Um, I would say that it's a medium-term, like a couple of years after the chemotherapy. And many of the 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 the, the, the uh, symptoms tend to disappear as they get older or improve as they get older. But it's something that that is frequently to, that I have seen frequently. Again, unfortunately, I don't have uh, 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 data, uh, but that's something that I have uh, frequently seen in my patients. I see around 20 patients uh, weekly. Meaning that I have seen many many patients, um, uh, mm -hmm. and that's something that I I see quite often. In patients uh, that has um, uh, treatment um, for optic nerve glioma. Okay. 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 I would like right, to. Thank you. I would. Perfect. My my pleasure. I would like to answer a couple of questions that I have here um, uh, written in in the chat. Uh, one is about uh, nonverbal learning disabilities. Um, um, uh, yes, this is that uh, nonverbal disability is a terminology that has been used for a long time. Uh, some of the um, modern neuropsychologists don't like that. I really like that. Um, I, I am a trained neuropsychologist um, in Europe um, many years ago, and the person that uh, developed this uh, the, um, uh, terminology, Dr. Rurke from England, uh, was somebody that I uh, knew many years ago, and I like the fact that how he described um, uh, the profile of the nonverbal disabilities uh, match very well many of the things that I see with NF. I mean that, again, many people don't like the diagnosis. I, 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 I like it. Um, but basically what it, it shows is that this kid has very severe difficulties in these special skills with some um, uh, good skills in verbal and in some areas of the verbal communication, and that's what I see in many of the kids uh, with NF. They are very good with verbal memory. Um, they have difficulties in other areas of the verbal skills, and they have difficulties in these special uh, uh, skills. It means that I would say that maybe they are not the studies that they are looking specific for uh, nonverbal learning disabilities, uh, because again, the terminology or the diagnosis is not commonly used in those days. But basically, the profile is the same that we have described in, in children with neurofibromatosis. And uh, the, the intervention uh, is very similar to what has been doing for other types of, of, of learning disabilities in this profile that is really enhancing the verbal skills that they have. Uh, that is complicated because they really many times have difficulties in articulation. They have difficulties in handwriting, um, but they are very. They have a great verbal memory most of the time. I mean that is how we can bypass many of the difficulties to show everybody how smart they are behind of all these difficulties. And for these special difficulties. Um, um, uh, well, it means we need to find accommodations that help that. It means uh, we need to use more uh, verbal tools and verbal mediated tools um, and GPS or any other things that help to navigate the world without uh, the need of so many of these special skills that are uh, sometimes um, difficult for them to use. Um, I hope that I have answered the question. 
Um, uh, there is another question that said that um, um, I don't understand. Uh, uh, it's about time, uh, t positive timeout for a nine years old. I really feel that you can use timeout, uh, positive timeout for any kid. I would say that probably what you uh, need to do is to explain um, the child the rules. And basically, when he is not upset, you need to explain, <coughs> sorry, you need to explain that what is going to happen is that as soon as you notice any, 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 any tip that the kid is getting out of control in his emotions, you are going to tell him or her, do you know? Think if you really need a time to regain control, and you need to to a, a place that uh, that you are going to be uh, um, to control yourself in a positive way. I can go with you. I am going to help you. This is about getting control. It's not about punishing you. Uh, very very gentle and very very encouraged about getting him or her successful in that process. Uh, that that the kid doesn't understand this as a threatening or punishment. It's just the other way. We want you to be happy. We want you to spend time with us happy and laughing and having fun. We don't want you to be upset and yelling and screaming. We don't like that. We want you to laughing and sharing with us and having very good time with us. Because we are going to do everything to obtain that. Because if you explain that and you start very early in the building up of his reaction or her reaction, you will be successful. The thing is, you really need to identify those signs of building up reaction very early to be able to go down in the reaction. But it's going to be useful for any kid if you try to do it uh, um, um, uh, early in, in, in the situation. Um, uh, it's another question about ADHD. I think that most of the kids, uh, I don't think that the ADHD in children with uh, NF is the same, that ADHD in the children with NF is very similar. And um, many of the interventions work for both. Uh, what probably is different is um, children with NF tend to be less, uh, have many times have less behavioral problems, not always, and the response to medications is different. I mean, that, uh, that's probably where you really need to have the, the, the help of somebody that wants to work with you guys about medications, because these medications work and work very well, but they are very sensitive to the medications, and um, it starts with very low doses, um, uh, with very, very slow, go slow and go low is my recommendation. Don't go with a very high doses and try to go down. It's not. It's the other way around. Go very slow, go very low. It doesn't matter that at the beginning you don't see any benefit. You always can go higher. It, that, but go higher and have a lot of side effects is something that not any child or any parent wants to, to face. Um, it, it doesn't work because it's too low, no problem. You go higher, and you can go little by little increase because what you really want to see is improving in their behavior, improving in the school performance with a minimal side effects, and that's basically the goal uh, in, in the medication. Um, uh, uh, the nonverbal learning disabilities is not the same as ADHD. Um, okay, I don't know if I if anybody has any other questions. Again, if anybody has questions, please feel free to um, email uh, me, M Acosta, or email um, 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 uh, Kaylin. Um, I will put my email here in case that anybody wants to email me. I am happy to answer any question that I can answer. Um, and thank you so much, everybody, for attending today this webinar. I would like to hear um, comments, suggestions. I it's the first one. 
uh, we are learning, and we hope to be um, improving every time that we do it. Thank you.